Welcome back to the 5 a.m. edition of the Think See Listen channel. Coming at you raw. I lost. Hold on, I can't do it like that. Welcome back to the Think See Listen channel, where I give it to you raw, uncut, and uncensored, unedited, and completely unprofessional. All to give glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. That's better. Good morning. Or whatever time and wherever you are. I feel led to read the lives of the saints, man. Stealing wisdom from St. Porphyrios. And I'm going to steal the wisdom from all the saints. Ever since i gotten to learn and meet my friends in heaven. <coughs> And ever since I've gotten to meet the ones who will do these things and greater things, like Jesus said, my life has been much enriched in my spirit. So I'm going to keep reading it. And I pray that it blesses you too. So, today's saints. Today's saints. <clears throat> We'll start off with Apostle Ananias of the Seventy. The Holy Apostle Ananias of the Seventy was the first bishop of Damascus. The Lord ordered him to restore the sight of Saul, the former persecutor of Christians, then baptized him in Acts 9, 10-19 and 22-12. Saul became the great preacher and apostle Paul. Saint Ananias boldly and openly confessed Christianity before the Jews and the pagans despite the danger. From Damascus, he went to preach at Eleutheropolis, where he healed many of their infirmities. <clears throat> Lucian, the perfect of the city, tried to persuade the Holy One to offer sacrifice to the Lucian, the prefect of the city, tried to persuade the Holy One to off, uh, offer sacrifice to idols because of Ananias's staunch and solid confession of Christ. Lucian ordered that he be tortured. Harsh torments did not sway the, sw the witness of truth. When the torturers led him out beyond the city, where they stoned him, the saint prayed for those who put him to death. His relics were later transferred to Constantinople. Amazing. And I just kind of watched this movie about the saint, uh, the Apostle Paul. It's kind of like Protestant made you could tell i saw on the daily readings there's the protection of the most holy theotokos and i want to read about this this sounds like a a story to hear the protection of our most holy lady the mother of god and ever virgin mary this miraculous appearance of the mother of god occurred in the mid-10th century in Constantinople, in the Blatcharnay church, where her robe, veil, where her robe, veil, and part of her belt were preserved after being transferred from Palestine in the 5th century. On Sunday, October 1st, during the all-night vigil, when the, whole, when the church was overflowing with those at prayer, the fool for Christ, St. Andrew, we learned about him. The fool for Christ, St. Andrew, at the fourth hour lifted up his eyes toward the heavens and beheld our most holy lady Theotokos coming through the air, resplendent with heavenly light and surrounded by an assembly of the saints, St. John the Baptist and the holy apostle John the Theologian, accompanied the Queen of Heaven on bended, on bended knees, the Most Holy Virgin, 
tearfully prayed for Christians for a long time. Then coming near the bishop's throne, she continued her prayer. After completing her prayer, she took her veil and spread it over the people praying in church, protecting them from enemies, both visible and invisible. The Most Holy Lady Theotokos was resplendent with heavenly glory, and protecting, and the protecting veil in her hands gleamed more than the rays of the sun. St. Andrew gazed trembling at the miraculous vision, and he asked, his disciple, the blessed Epiphanius, standing beside him. Do you see, brother, the most, the holy Theotokos praying for all the world? Epiphanius answered, I do see, holy father, I am in awe. The ever-blessed mother of God implored the Lord Jesus Christ to accept the prayers of all the people, calling on his most holy name and to respond speedily to her intercession. O oh, heavenly King, accept all those who pray to you and call on my name for help. Do not let them go away from my icon unheard. Saint Andrew and Saints Andrew and Epiphanius were worthy to see the Mother of God at prayer, and for a long time, observed the protecting veil spread over the people and shining with flashes of glory. As long as the Most Holy Theotokos was there, the protecting veil was also visible, but with her departure, it also became invisible. After taking it with her, she left behind the grace of her visitation. At the Blesherne Church, the memory of the, the miraculous appearance of the Mother of God was remembered in the 14th century. The Russian pilgrim and clerk Andrew, uh, Alexander saw in the church an icon of the Most Holy Theotokos praying for the world, depicting St. Andrew in contemplation of her. The primary chronicle of St. Nestor reflects that the protective intercessions of the Mother of God was needed because an attack of a large pagan Russian fleet under the leadership of Ascoli and Durr. The feast celebrates the divine destruction of the fleet which threatened Constantinople itself sometime in the year 864 to 867. Or according to the Russian historian Vasiliev, on June 18, 860. Ironically, this feast is considered more important by the Slavs than by the Greeks. The, the primary chronicle of St. Nestor also notes the miraculous deliverance followed an all-night vigil and the dipping of the garment of the Mother of God into the waters of the sea at the Plesharnay Church but does not mention St. Andrew and Epiphanius in their vision of the Mother of God at prayer. These latter elements and the beginnings of the celebrating of the Feast of the Protection seem to post-date St. Nestor and the Chronicle. A further historical complication might be noted under October 2nd dating St. Andrew's death to the year 963. The year of death might not be quite reliable or the, or, or the assertion that he survived to a ripe old age after the vision of his youth or that his vision involved...